In this video, what you're going to walk away is really understanding the mortgage process, what you could expect if you're buying a home and need to apply for a loan. You'll understand the costs of a loan and some strategies to help keep your costs down. So this is really exciting. I'm here today with Yael Shakis, and she's a mortgage broker with FM Home Loans. Hi everybody, I'm Yael Shakis. I'm a mortgage lender with FM Home Loans. We do specialize in first-time home buyers and we take you to buying your multi-million dollar 100 unit building or your 50 million dollar warehouse so we try to walk you along the way and be your financing person throughout your journey okay so let's start with interest rates okay so i'm a first-time home buyer what is the ballpark of interest rates in today's market we're in 2023 it's a question that really i don't even think we should address and i'm going to tell you why i think that Nobody here can control interest rates. It's really controlled by the Fed. But we could control, can we afford a house? So to me, it doesn't make a difference if the interest rate is 10%, 2%, 5%, happens to be the rates are in the mid sixes now. That's where we are today. Two years ago this time, we were in the high threes. So you see like how it shifts so much, but really what any buyer should really concentrate on, what is my monthly payment? Can I afford that? And I wouldn't get hung up on the interest rate. I always say if the numbers make sense, don't pay attention to the interest rates. Just do what you can. But what I want to know is what's a simple way to understand what your monthly payments are going to be based on the interest rate? Funnily enough, that's a real, it's a math question. Mortgage payments are cumulative interest. I have to actually use a mortgage calculator or I go into a loan amortization schedule, which is like in every Excel. I'll tell you the basic formula. Every house that somebody purchases, a must have is insurance and a must have is taxes. Taxes are what they are, so you have to look up in the tax records or on Zillow, it would say what the taxes are. So let's assume taxes are on a specific house, $8,000. That's a, a, a nice number. And let's assume in Jersey, typical insurance is $1,500. So before we even started, we have $9,500 that we have to allocate into our mortgage payment. And then with regards to the mortgage, you actually have to plug it in to a mortgage calculator. I guess what I was thinking, like, I, I mean, based on working with my clients, like I can estimate the mortgage payments today are about six and a half percent. I even would like it to use seven percent just because it's so volatile. And last week we even hit the seventh. I see it dipping, it moves up and down. Right. But I like to prepare everybody for the worst case than to be shocked, you know? A $500,000 mortgage, assuming a taxes and insurance of $9,500 annually, and assuming a 6.875 mortgage rate, the mortgage payment comes out to be 4,076 monthly. Basically, if you're taking out a loan for $500,000, you're gonna expect with your principal interest and- Taxes and insurance. Yeah, you're gonna expect the payment to be about $4,100. Yes, and then when you hear terms of pity, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. $500,000 mortgage, assume a $4,100 monthly payment. When somebody calls you, what yes. can they expect? So when somebody calls me, I want to know a couple of things. First thing is we ask about credit. How's your credit? The reason why we're asking this is because as a bank, we need to determine, do you pay your other debt? Like your, do you pay your car payments in time? Do you pay your other stuff? Because we want to get paid on time. So that's the first thing we're evaluating. The second thing when we look at somebody's credit is A, the, the payments and also to see how much debt the person does have. So we're looking at car loans or leases, student loans, credit card, or other personal loans. That's usually that comes up on a credit. I, as a side note, like to look at someone's credit because sometimes there's collection accounts, things that people don't even know about. We could try to get that cleaned up because that hurts scores. So we want to get the optimal score because that gives you the best rates. The next thing we're looking at is income. So what are we looking at? There's a term in the mortgage world, it's called ATR, ability to repay. So we are determining, do you have ability to repay your mortgage? That's really what we care about. We want to get paid back and we want to get paid on time. The basic way how we underwrite it, and it's very quick calculation, is let's assume the $500,000 mortgage. So we said the payment was about $4,100. Then let's assume the same person has a $500 car loan or lease. So now we're at $4,600 and then they have like credit cards, which the minimum payment is about $100. So at $4,700 a month for this person. Very, very quick calculation is if they make double that, they can afford this loan. So if they show the gross income, we're not talking about net, that's where a lot of people get confused. So let's say in my made up scenario where somebody made their entire payment, including their future housing 
and their current existing payments is $4,700, they have to sort of make $9,400 a month in order to qualify. And that's what we're looking at as income. So when someone calls me, I like to ask them, they can send me their pay stub or their tax returns so I can determine, hey, do you qualify? So when you say gross, so let's say if their gross payments are, let's say $10,000, then their total debt can be up to $5,000, including the housing fee. Yes, so that's that's a very simple way. Then the third thing we're looking at is assets. So if somebody's buying a house, we want to know where's the down payment coming from? Where's the closing costs coming from? The reason why we want to know is because we want to make sure that you're not borrowing the funds. So let's say I buy a house and I call up my good friend Yael and I say, Yael, I'm looking to buy a house. I have no money. Could you lend me the money? And Yael's very nice. So she says, sure. So she lends me the money. I see Yael every single day and I'm embarrassed. So I want to pay her back before I pay the nameless mortgage company. So that's really what they're looking at. They want to make sure you don't have borrowed funds. So gift funds are allowed, money that you have in the savings bank or different ways of it. but borrowed funds is really what we're looking at and we want to make sure that you have the money once you actually purchase a house the fourth component is the appraisal is this house that you're buying worth it is it livable so that's the next thing we're looking at and the fifth item is title so this is something your attorney orders and they're making sure that you're getting a house that's clean there's no liens on there there's no encroachments there's no neighbor problems you know the last thing you want to do is buy a house and you find out that somebody has a lien the previous owner you want to clean that's really what a mortgage is it's quite simple you make it sound simple but I have applied for a loan and just the paperwork is horrendous and the amount of stuff that the bank asks can make you cry. Just thinking about it, they would ask me to sign a paper four times. And then when I would log into their account check, it would kick me out. Let me explain to you what's going okay, on. So thanks. We're like in a digital <laughs> age, right? So you know how, like, if you do a wire, the bank has to call and verify that it's you because it's AI and all these scary things that go yeah. on. We have the same thing. So we double check everything. So somebody gives us their pay stubs, their W-2s. That's really what we ask for, the tax returns. We verify with the IRS. So that's a verification that you have to sign. That's income. We also go to the employer to fill out a verification of employment. That's another verification. And that's where everybody gets a little crazy. Like, why are you doing this? You're putting me through the ringer. Assets. You have to show me your bank statement. Guess what? We need to check it with account check. That's like a third party verification system that the money's there, that it's, you know, these are the statements. Appraisal comes from a third party, but everything does get triple checked and verified and everybody's worried. So we just double check and triple and then, check. So, but what advice can you give to a buyer? What's a practical tip that you have? Practical tip is before you get like apply for a mortgage, have your income, have your pay stubs, have your bank statements together. Those are the really two things. And just sit down and let the loan officer that you're talking to, the bank or the broker, whoever you're speaking with, review it and see everything. Sometimes I get pay stubs that are cut off. I can't see it. I don't even know what this is. Or they'll say, I make $5,000. No, they really make more. They're talking about their net. Just give everything up front and right. let like the professional who knows how to Sometimes look at it. Sometimes they'll actually look through the bank statement and say, oh, we see you have a transaction of $7,000. We source that. What is that about? Okay, so that's what we're talking about is assets. So the, it's exactly what I discussed before. It's like, we wanna make sure you're not borrowing the money. A large deposit is you take somebody's income and they're allowed to deposit up to 50% of their income without any questions asked. That's a tip. Let's say somebody makes $10,000 a month and they deposit $4,000 or $5,000. We're not going to ask any questions. But if they deposit $5,500, bingo, what's this large deposit? And the reason why we're asking that is we want to make sure that this person doesn't have gift. They're not borrowing money. A good tip is don't put any large deposits that are less, higher than 50% of your income. Don't get a new job. Don't take out a new car. I have a closing today, actually that the client um, got a gift last night from the grandmother. I have to redo an appraisal. I have to re-underwrite the file. I have to redo a lock. We sent the money, we wired the money to the closing agent. We have to take the money back, do it and rewire. We have to do so many different things. So I have no problem redoing everything and dropping two hours in the morning to make sure it works. <laughs> and the clients call me, why isn't it here yet? I'm like, I sent it yesterday, but you changed something, sweetheart. But we have no problem doing it because we want the best for the client. But really, if the guy was a little planned out and he knew that grandma was giving him a gift, he, it would have been nice if he told me. So I could like avoid these 
like last minute rushes. Got it. Can somebody buy a house with less than 20% down? The answer is yes. You can buy a house with 3% down. The reason why people have that misconception in their head that you have to have 20% down is because any time you put down less than 20%, you have to pay something called mortgage insurance. But people want to avoid that and they put down 20%. But there's so many ways to avoid the mortgage insurance. For example, I have a client right now that should we just close? He put 5% down. What happened was is that we negotiated with the seller. The purchase price was, let's say, $550. What we did was is that instead of him making a monthly mortgage insurance payment, we paid it up front. But we went to the seller and the seller sold the property for $560, contributed that $10,000 to the client's closing costs, which we apply towards the mortgage insurance. And then the client had 5% down with no mortgage insurance. So there are creative ways, and you should talk to a professional, because sometimes it makes sense to do the monthly, sometimes it makes sense to do upfront. And there's sometimes there are programs out there that don't even require mortgage insurance at all. So talk about it and don't let these scary news stories scare you. And are there any programs out there that are there to assist first time home buyers? And what are your thoughts about what is currently available? Yes, there are first time home buyer programs, this first time home buyer grants. The, the government, the US government, I think we have the best mortgage system out there. We really want to promote home ownership. There are a lot of incentives out there to help homeowners, you know, achieve the dream. Now, the problem that I've been seeing is that a lot of them, they don't want to let, you know, the rich people take advantage. They want to do it for the, you know, people who are lower income. The problem is, is that their low income, the gauges, we've outgrown them. The cost of living, inflation, you have to make more money than a lot of the programs. So unfortunately, even though they exist, a lot of people want to get them and they really need the help, but they make a dollar more and they don't qualify. Could you talk about what these programs are? Because I know there's like a $15,000 grant or you know, no PMI or something like that. You can't really tell. You have to study the person and the zip code that they're buying in also. Some zip codes are called LMI, lower to moderate income zip codes. You can qualify income wise, but you want to buy in an area that's not LMI. So that's why it's, you're not really hearing it because unfortunately, not many people qualify for it. It's really unfortunate. But when I evaluate a client, that's the first thing I check. What is this thing that they're getting? We have a $15,000 grant. That means that they can get $15,000 towards their down payment. They don't have to come up with. And what's the drawback to that? Everybody has different criteria, but some of them require, say, you have to make a certain amount and then a lot of people don't fit into it. Or there's another grant that you, the only loan available for that is an FHA mortgage. Now, I love FHA, which is the Federal Housing Authorities. Their loan, it's a great loan because you can put 3.5% down and you don't have to have great credit. There's a lot, a lot of good perks to the program. But they have mortgage insurance for life. It never goes away. So that's a drawback, in my opinion. Like, I would rather put you in a program, put down 3% when your value of your house goes up or you pay down your enough principal you can get rid of the mortgage insurance. With the FHA, can you refinance an FHA yes, once? absolutely. You can refinance whenever you want. When the rates were really low, I tried not to put people in the FHA program because now where the rates are, let's say I was giving someone a 3% rate and they had the FHA and now they have enough equity in their house and they want to refinance, the rate is like 6%. So it doesn't make sense for them to refinance. But if they took a conventional loan, and the house went up in value. All they did have to do was pick up the phone, call the bank up, and the bank will remove it after they send an appraiser down and they can keep that 3% rate. Sometimes something sounds attractive, but if you want to look at the grand picture, it's very smart to talk to a professional who can guide you and say, I know it looks good, don't do it. Rather do this because in the long run, you're going to save X. But I do think that you should be informed and call your lenders and see if they are affiliated with the programs and they can guide you through it and see, does it work? Does it not work for you? If somebody has bad credit and they're not on an FHA loan, how will that affect their monthly payments or their interest rates? And what could they do to help improve their situation? Credit is very important to a mortgage because the way the system is done is that if you have good credit, the lenders want to lend to you quicker. And then if you have credit that's not as good, the lenders say, all right, I'll lend to you, but 
you're going to pay for this. You're a riskier loan, so you have to pay a higher rate because we want to yield a higher return because you're riskier. So that's really what it is. If you're in the market for a home, it's so important to look at your credit. You don't even have to talk to a mortgage professional. You can go to Credit Karma or Free Credit Report, all these like different places. I have a client right now that they have five credit cards. To make her life easier, she puts all her bills on one credit card. That credit card has a $10,000 limit. Now, at the end of the month, after all her bills and everything, she ends up spending $10,000. So what happens is, is that she's at 100% utilization. The credit agencies that are giving the scoring look at this and say, hey, this person maxes out on their credit. They're a risk. Meanwhile, she has so much other credit available. So if she would just take and use three credit cards, she would be considered a great candidate. So a lot of things that people have bad credit, it's simply because they don't know. They're doing things out of convenience or um, a medical bill. There's a collection account. They, the insurance is supposed to pay it. For 50 bucks, somebody's score went from 800 to 600. There's so many little pieces of advice that you can give and say, hey, pay down this credit card, pay off this little thing here, Just switch this over there and your credit can go up like 100 points. And I've seen it and I do it. We have a system called a rapid rescore. Plus that's like $150, I think per bureau. But I just had it right now. Somebody had a collection account and her score went down. She got a letter from the collection account that it was paid. She had to sit on the phone for two hours. I felt bad for her, but I told her to do it anyway. We got the letter. I did a rapid rescore. So $450 later, the lady went from a 675 per score to like a 740. And it made a world of a difference in her monthly payment. Credit is something you should even look at six months before you're planning on buying a house. The rapid rescore analyzes the situation or it just rescores it immediately. There's something called a what's if simulator. That what's if simulator is something I play with a lot. I'll say, what if she pays off this? What if she raises the limit of that? And then it says the score will go to that. We play around with it. Once we look at the what's if we have a game plan and we get a letter, then we send it in as a rapid rescore. Normally credit bureaus take, can take up to 30 to 60 days. Mm. Rapid rescore can take up to five. If someone's credit score is like you know, 600 versus 700 versus 800, how would that affect their interest rate? There was a lot of news like, hey, the Biden is punishing the good credit for the bad. And really that is what happened. There's something called LLPAs, Loan Level Pricing Adjustments. So it used to be that if you had a lower FICO score, you had a higher LLPA. Now the government decided that they're going to be Robin Hood. So they gave higher LLPAs to people who had good credit to offset the worst credit. Good credit people still get better rates, but the bad credit people are not getting as punished. But it still makes sense to have good credit. That's really what it is. Let's say somebody who had a 785 score would get a rate of six and a half and a person with a 640 would get a rate of seven. Now the person with the 785 score is getting 6.75 and the person with the bad credit is still getting seven. They just did and give a bigger check. It does logically make sense that we should, we should reward someone for their good behavior. What's a seller's concession? Seller's concession is a great tool. Let's say somebody's putting down 5% on a $500,000 house. That's 25 grand. Then there's another part of the closing that you need is closing costs. In New Jersey, typical closing costs on a $500,000 house is let's say 10 to $12,000. So let's say it's 10 because I want to make it easier. So someone has to come up with $35,000. They don't have it. They only have 25. And guess what? They don't qualify for a grant. So what are they going to do? So what happens is they found this house for 500000 The house appraises for five fifteen. dollars So instead of making an offer of five hundred, dollars they make an offer for five fifteen dollars with a concession from the seller that the seller gives them that $15,000 towards their closing. The seller nets the exact same amount of money and the buyer then only has to come up with the $25,000 because the, the closing cost is covered by the seller and gets financed in the loan. So it's a win-win for everybody. And that's really what it is. It's a very smart, kosher, strategic tool to use. We love it. What does it mean? I sometimes hear the phrase to buy down points. Rates to me is a tool to get into the house, but it obviously makes a huge difference because when the rates were lower, the monthly payment is lower. So people who are very, very conscious about monthly payments, or let's say they say, I can't go a dollar above $4,000, but these are the rates. So they can do something called a buy down. They can buy down the rate. They pay 1% of the loan amount. So let's take the $500,000 loan amount. They'll pay $5,000 and they can lower the rate. Hence for the next 30 years, they'll have a lower rate. Now, personally, 
personally, I'm not such a fan of lie down points. Sometimes it makes sense. I personally, in this environment where we are right now, don't think it's smart because I think rates will come down within the next two to three years. And points usually take about four and a half years to start making sense. So if your intention is to move or to refinance, which probably most people in America who's taking out a loan today, they're going to probably refinance. Don't take your money and throw it out in points because you're going to waste it. Take the money, put it into savings, and when you refinance the home, use that money as your closing cost. Well, you can do that or the house most likely would have appreciated so you can build it in. I can tell you take that money and use it to paint the house. Do right. something that you need to do. The houses are expensive. Let's just break down. So when you're saying you know, someone's going to pay down points. So let's go with a $500,000 loan. What does one point mean? 1% 1 of the loan amount. So it's five grand. That's so it would cost them $5,000. And what could they expect? Like, let's say we were talking about rates at 7%. So if they're buying down the rate, what would $5,000 get their so rate to? That's a very hard question to answer because there's so many programs. There's a program called the 2 one buy down that you can, it's about 2%. So let's say under $500,000 loan, take $10,000. Year number one, they would get a rate, let's say today's rate of seven, they would get a rate of 5%. Year number two, they would get a rate of 6%. And year number three, they'll go to a rate the back to what it should be, 7%. But what if rates are, let's say in, two, in three years, what if rates are 6%? Then they would refinance at that time. That's why that program, it happens to be popular and I like these loans because they're not wasting money. But on a typical loan where you're just buying down a rate, it probably goes down a quarter of a percent. So let's say the rate today is 7%, they can probably get 6.75 or the one point buy down. Every scenario is different and we have to price it out. What are some strategies that can help people keep their monthly payments lower? It's really buying down rates. The 2 one buy down is very popular. Keeping good credit so your rate could be better. Putting down more money. What do you do to help make the process smooth for clients who hire? You. So I think communication is key. Wow. First of all, buying a house is probably the biggest purchase of everybody's life. It's very scary. And they're taking out like, let's take our $500,000 number. They're $500,000 in the hole now. That's very daunting, right? We try to communicate and just really teach people that, you know, this is the way to build what houses appreciate in across America. If you look at charts, 2% per year. In our market over here, over COVID, we did like 25% year over year, yeah. but that's unsustainable. So then the market, let's say went up 50%, 70% but now, I mean, on average, I think it's about like six, seven percent. So if you buy a house, let's take our five hundred thousand dollars house in Kentucky, the house will go up two percent per year, so it's ten thousand dollars more. But in this market, you just said six to seven percent. You buying a five hundred thousand dollars house, you have thirty thousand dollars. You're sleeping on equity. Which other asset can you go to sleep and earn thirty grand? It's unbelievable. But the return on investment on a house, if somebody puts down ten percent, is a hundred percent after five years and that's using a two percent number of appreciation per year but in our market it's after two years you make back your money so i try to communicate the benefits of why it's so great to buy a house and try to really give detailed um what the next step is this is what you should expect this yes i'm going to drive you crazy yes you're going to have to sign 50 letters but we'll help you through it we'll walk you through it we'll hold your hand and by real clear communication i recently closed the loan for somebody in eight days because we were so concise and they knew exactly what to do it was a pleasure i think communication is key everything can be hard but i had a client that we have to write a full access letter it's called so let's say you and i buy a house together the loan is in my name you give me access to your share bank account. So I had a client who asked me, what should I write in the letter? What's an access letter? She got all scared. I'm like, so I told her the letter should write to who it may concern. I give my adorable, gorgeous, muscled husband permission to use my, she got so excited and her muscled husband called me up and says, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> so you make it fun. Yes, it's annoying, but let's have fun while doing exactly. that. Exactly. What advice would you give to somebody regarding affordability and what they can spend on their monthly housing payments? I know you said that the bank is willing to loan them 50% of whatever is not debt in their income, but for practical purposes, what's your suggestions? My first question to clients is, what do you feel you can afford? Because there's nothing practical. I don't know what your tuition payments are. I don't know what your daycare payments are. And I don't know that you go out to eat every night and spend $500 a night. I don't know that. So you're the one who is in charge of your payments. So you have to do what's comfortable. So that's really my first question to everybody. I also have clients that don't show any income. They're, they're getting help by parents. They're in school. They have no income. So then if you look at their tax 
tax returns to say, hey, you can't afford anything, but this they could, they, they might have a bigger budget than someone else. It's up to the person to say, what do you feel you could afford? And then my job is to say, okay, you can afford $5,000 a month, but you show that you're making $5,000 a year. How do you really make this money? <laughs> and then they'll tell me, well, I'm getting help from the parents. And I'll say, okay, that's great. And can the parents co-sign? You know, we'll figure out what to do, how to get them the loan. A person should really budget themselves. I think that issues that people have is they're so afraid of the numbers and they shut down. It's like psychological warfare. And let me tell you something else. Rents are insane. And the rent on a house was like $4,900, really high. And for a house, it's just a little bit more. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. So jump, take the plunge, just make sure the numbers work and you can afford it. Really your answer to the question is, it's what the client feels comfortable based on their income and their expenses, which we don't know what those are. Correct. And key number one, I always say with this math, it's fifth grade math. Don't be scared of it. Like, look at the numbers. They're, they're not biting you. They're not hurting you. So yeah, uh, could you tell us about yourself and how you got into this industry and into this field? I am a mother of six. I'm married. Next week is gonna be my 21st anniversary. I bought many houses, sold many houses. I got into this industry when I was in high school. I got a summer job in a mortgage company and I was a processor. I have no idea why the owner of the company kept calling me to come back because I was terrible. I'm not organized, I'm sloppy, but I guess I showed up on time, I don't know. So when I graduated, he kept calling me, come back, come back, and I did. So I got into the industry and I wasn't great at math. That really Really was my weakest point. I remember going to the other people in the office saying, can you figure this out for me? I don't know how to do it. But I realized that I loved helping people. I loved showing somebody a vision. And if somebody can't buy a house now, I like to put them on a path. They will in a year. And I loved it. I did a loan for somebody 20 years ago and he called me now with his grandson. It's just so exciting to me. Like I love helping the generations. And I really, really feel like I'm part of people's wealth building. I remember I went to a hairdresser and she asked me what I do. And I told her I do mortgage because I can never buy a house. I'm like, what do you mean? Of course you can. And then six months later, she bought a house. and. She's a very good friend of mine now. She bought two houses since. She bought buildings. She's invested in tons of real estate. So I love the process of walking, walking somebody through. And, and in the process, a lot of these clients have become my friends, become my partners. I've gone to ventures with them. Yes. I, I love it. Over the years, I've built a team. We're closing and I align myself. FM Home Loans is a great bank. We're, they really a community-based lender. We want it to be there for the community. And we've been doing really well. If anybody wants to learn how to buy buildings or how to do different analyzing, call me. This is like a passion of mine. And my latest piece of advice to everybody is just jump, stop overthinking. I had a client that three years ago, he was overthinking the same house that he was gonna buy a house and then had cold feet for 700,000 is now back on sale for one three and he's buying it for one three. Get into the market. You can always sell if you don't like it. If you look at charts, houses appreciate. It doesn't, you don't really lose value. And there's not a lot of property out there. So go in. You have a great team to help you. Y'all's patient. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for your time and for your expertise. It's so nice, you know, like people call me and obviously I've been doing this so long, I know the answers, but I find somebody who's day in, day out doing loans. There are so many things I learned today that I did not know. I want to add one more thing. I wrote a book. I have for kids and adults. I love it. So if your kids are nervous, call me. I'll send you one free. And I also have one. It's available on Amazon and I can send you ship you one as well. What's the title of your kids book? The kids one. Um, Sari moves to a new home. And I wrote the book with my little Sari, who a riot so she was our main inspiration so the adult book is very helpful for first time home buyers as well so to summarize what we talked about today was the overview of the mortgage process what to expect when you're going to buy a house credit techniques what to do you know how to fix your credit how to be prepared with the income you know there's other items that we didn't touch upon and everybody has their own nuanced situation so get a consultation that's really what, what it is. How do we strategize about assets, what banks are looking for? And we explain why it's so annoying. But it's all fun. It's a very, it's yeah. the, the house is the price. Thank you, Yael, for being here. My pleasure. Yes.